Hi, I'm Ellen and I'm the Interpretation Manager at the MAC and today for our behind the scenes video we are with Allison Dungan, our VTS specialist, talking about Mount St. Helens and the story of David Johnston. Take it away, Allison. The Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture presents Behind the Scenes, the story of David A. Johnston. David A. Johnston had always been fascinated by volcanoes. Born in Illinois in 1949, he graduated from the University of Illinois in 1971 with a geology degree and began to study volcanoes across the United States. After completing his PhD at the University of Washington, his work began to focus around volatiles or volcanic gases and their relationship to volcanic eruptions. In 1978, he began his work with the U.S. Geological Survey. His job was to expand the programs that were involved with the monitoring of volcanic emissions, specifically using monitoring to test whether or not changes in gas makeup might provide hints of impending eruptions. It was not surprising that when Mount St. Helens began to show signs of activity in March 1980, Dave Johnston was eager to be on the scene. He and his team were some of the first scientists to arrive on the mountain. And it's fortunate he was there, as one of only two scientists that were focused on volcanic gases and how they may be able to predict activity. He and his team had the data to convince authorities to first limit access to the area around the volcano, and second, to keep the area closed to the public, even under mounting pressures to reopen. This potentially saved thousands of lives. After weeks of activity, on April 17th, a cryptodome, or bulge, was discovered on the northern flank of the mountain. Johnson and another professor, Jack Hyde, believed that this bulge could become a lateral blast. The team set up monitoring systems and observation posts. They were astonished to find that the bulge was growing at a rate of 5 to 8 feet per day. David, wanting to be close to the action, volunteered to be at Coldwater 2 the observation post just six miles north of the mountain. On the morning of May 18th, he woke early and checked the monitoring systems three times in the next hour and a half, noting the growth rate seemed to be slowing. It is not certain whether David Johnson felt the 5.1 earthquake that morning as others had, but he definitely witnessed the lateral blast. Attempting to radio the news to Vancouver, he broadcast, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. Unfortunately, his transmission only made it as far as a ham radio operator who recorded his message and tried to contact him with no success. Geology student Harry Glicken, who had been scheduled to be on the mountain that morning, made several desperate attempts to go up with search and rescue teams to find his friend. All signs of David, Coldwater II, and the entire top of Mount St. Helens were gone. Thirteen years later, the trailer was uncovered. David's remains never were. David A. Johnston has been remembered as a truly great scientist who can be attributed with saving lives. Though initially shocked, family and friends all agree that David loved what he did, and even though he knew it would never make him rich, he had found his passion. He wanted to be where he was, and he died doing what he loved. 